Hello there guys, Feng here, and welcome to Mad Games Tycoon. Okie dokie then, so Mad Games Tycoon is a game development company simulator. You might remember games such as uh, Game Dev Story or um, Game Dev Tycoon or even Games Gone Makers. I've actually covered a few of these on the channel um, in the past. But this one's um, pretty intriguing. So it takes that formula and it takes elements of the Sims and combines it into one. It's actually pretty cool. So it's currently in early access. So obviously everything here is not a representation of the final product once it's out. So bear that in mind. There are some features that are missing and blah blah blah. You, you know the drill by now. So, <coughs> first we're going to do is look at the options, of course. So, uh, there's a fair few options, nothing major, you know. We've got 1080, graphic settings, full screen, disable, disable the backgrounds and stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, disable is NPC release game. No, we want to keep those, that's fine. Okie dokie. So this has been getting updated um, nearly every day actually. Um, the last few updates last week, um, I think there was one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Obviously there was none uh, released of the weekend but it's been getting constantly updated which is really nice so you know it's not being left in the dust as per se. So we're going to crack on with a new game. So we need to put our player name which is of course Thinkforth. Because why not? Our company name, uh, we're going to have Fengterprises, of course. And we can get to choose a company now, go. As you can probably tell, some of these are pretty uh, noticeable. As we can see, we've got Koei there. We've got uh, Comedy. We've got Blue Ocean. Uh, we've got Minisoft. Yes, Minisoft. Uh, Ibusoft. Uh, Siga. Pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Has bros. Uh, okay, so what shall we have? Let's have uh, let's have a claim. Actually, I'll have the uh, the basic one. Uh, we'll start in England, of course. And should we have an easy start? No, we're not going to have an easy start. Screw that. Actually, what else is there? Uh, some of these unlock other things. Unlock our own engine. You know, I'm just going to keep with England. That's that's where we'll leave. So. There we go. We're not gonna have an easy start, and in fact, we're gonna we're gonna play this on hard. So, first we need to do is choose a genre for our character. So, let's go ahead and pick. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a building game. I like building games. Um, we need to pick a special feature that we're pretty good at. I'm gonna pick save games. Everyone loves saving the game, so there we go. Uh, most games these days, if they don't have a save game feature, they're crap. <laughs> All right, so. And um, we've got a couple of stats here. So game design, programming, graphics, and music and sound. These are the four that you need to actually develop games. Yeah. But obviously you can do other stuff in your company. You can do contracts which require programming. You can also create engines which also require programming. You can also um, research obviously new features and genres and topics and stuff which requires game design. Uh, you will also eventually need uh, like support staff, which re requires office work, and marketing, which also requires office work. And then we've got speed and work. Well, speed is how quickly uh, stuff gets done, and work well is basically how much they are willing to work without having certain needs met, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plonk one on no we're going to plonk two on game design we're going to plonk one on programming and we're going to pr uh, plonk two on speed speed is really essential uh, speed and work will are the only ones that you can't really increase via the training room so yeah those quiet eyes pretty useful let's tell that and we're going to play it on hard so welcome to the screen here is the game it's kind of cool doesn't it Right now, just give me two ticks. Right, let's show you. Uh, let's show the UI first of all. So obviously we've got the amount of money there. Fifty grand. Fifty grand is not a lot. This is on hard. Hard is extremely hard, and you have to play it a certain way to actually make money to start off with. It's pretty difficult. Uh, obviously we've got no fans because we haven't made any games yet. Makes sense. 
uh, this star here, this basically shows the quality of the office. Basically, the higher this is, the more employees you can hire, and also the more work well they are more likely to um, basically work without certain needs, which is pretty good. Obviously, we've got the year, month, and week, and we also have the uh, week timer. This uh, bar up here shows you the current trend, so as you can see, we've got pets and skill game. And we've also got a few other things here. This is basically just to move, uh, enable disabled pick up objects. Um, you can hide the walls and etc. We'll keep the walls though. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a very small, small, small room to work with. And there's a certain way you really need to build this to actually start making any money at all. So, first thing we need is a restroom. We need the very bare essentials. We need the smallest restroom we can buy. There we are, it's going to cost 12000 We need a door on that, of course, so we're going to build it there. And we're also going to need a toilet, of course. Now, toilets are quite expensive. We're looking at five grand there. And that's already nearly 20 grand gone. Yay! Now, the next thing we're going to need is a development room. Without a development room, we can't do anything. So, we need to make sure that it's got plenty of room to be able to do research. I mean, not research. We need to make sure we've got plenty of room so that we can do research as well as uh, develop games. Now, I'm trying to remember what the size was. What was it going to have the size at now? I honestly can't remember. Yeah, was that it? I think that might be it. Very important you get the size right on art because you, you don't get refunded for um, cocking your rooms up. So, here is the development room. Now, in the development room, you can develop a game, you can uh, get, do contract work, and you can also develop your engine. We've actually got that one locked at the moment. Because, well, locked at the moment because we haven't made a game yet. So, the first thing we're going to need is a desk. So, as you can tell, there's a lot of choice of the desks. Uh, the star actually shows you the rating. So, obviously, if we were to put this one down, it would give us one star. Uh, if we put that down, it would give us three, etc., etc. So, I'm going to start off with a really cheap desk. And it's just going to be Feng for the time being. So, we need to find some contract work. Hopefully, there's something decent. That one's fine. So, um,. As you can see, we've got the workload. The higher the workload, the longer it will take to actually complete the task. The <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Sorry. There is a bit of broken English. Obviously, it's early access. I think the devs are actually German as well, so it's to be expected. Yeah, so the delivery is uh, 13 weeks. Uh, you can see we actually get some say, but you do get a penalty if you do not do it in time. So bear that in mind. So we're going to optimize the control, and that's going to give us quite a nice bit of salary to start off with. So uh, doing this does require programming. Uh, obviously, Feng does have a little bit of uh, programming experience, so as you can see, that's going up quite nicely. Right, so we've got that head office here. At the head office, we can buy licenses. For certain titles, as you can see, we can have uh, Bel Air Cop, the uh, Glimstones, yes, they're very uh, cliche, as you can probably tell, of course. What well, good uh, game development game does not have cliched stuff like that? Right, and you can also buy engines. Now, this is actually what we are focusing on hard. When this is where new people kind of stumble over when they pick hard. They straight away try and make games. That's the last thing you want to be doing because you're not going to be able to make the money from just making games. Even if you know the optimal um, the optimal slider inputs, you're still not going to make much money at all. So you need to start off with making engines. Otherwise, you're just not going to you're just not going to make the money. The, there's a bit of a trap with buying engines from third parties. So normally buy engines normally cost you a set amount to start off with, and it will. You also have to give them party profits. Now, of course, depending on the engine, if it's a really good engine, there's a good chance you'll be sharing a lot of the profits, and you won't actually make any money. You could actually end up losing money if anything. So that's kind of a trap, but we're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to be building engines for different genres. So that we can actually earn money via that means. Because, to be quite honest, it's kind of pointless making games um, to start off with if you don't have a decent engine. But, for us to actually unlock the research room, we need to make a game. So, we need to make the cheapest game we can. 
But I'm just having a quick look because there's any more contract work first. There's quite a few. And we're, we're going to be, basically, the way we're going to get our money is through contract to start off with until we can actually start our own engine properly. So, let's start off with a game. So, we've got, uh, oh, you know, I'm going to go with pets because I already know the proper output for that. And I'll show you kind of why that's the case. So, we'll go with that. We'll go with a puzzle game. And this is going to be called um, Gem Pets because, yeah, Gem Pets. <laughs> It's got no engine because we don't have an engine, and there's only two features with games that have no engine, and it's for a skill game. So that's even better. Actually, we might just put it as a skill game instead. Screw it. All right, platform that. Okie dokie. So at the at this screen, we can actually select the licenses that we buy. Obviously, we haven't bought none, and you can also use copy protection. Um, obviously you don't really need to do right at the start, you don't even have access to it so it doesn't matter, but you will need to do some sort of copy protection when you start selling bulk, and I mean you need it. Uh, privacy is quite a big thing in this game, so you have to be careful about that. Now, uh, I'll try to remember what it was now, I think it's that, um, even if it's not quite right, it should be about right, about like that, yeah about that, that should be about it. Now we're going to focus basically um, overall everything, 25% on everything. It doesn't really matter at this point, we're just trying to go with costs and we're only going to make it for English. So, 28 grand. Now what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go ahead and build a second desk and we're going to hire our first employee. Now it's really important that your first employee is the programming sort. So as you can see our first one's programming. Now, this is actually one of the criticisms I've got about the game at the moment. The employees are not randomised yet. You will always get the same employees by the look of it, which is a bit poo because it means you can basically plan ahead. Yeah, it would be nice and more realistic if they were more randomised. But for the time being, I know that there's going to be a programming here, so we're going to go ahead and stick in there, and you can go ahead and help out with the game. Now this game doesn't have many features, so it's not going to take very long at all. But it's also not going to be a very good game. But the main reason why we're doing this is so that we can unlock the research room. Because without the research room, we cannot do research. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? Ah, so at 60%, come on, come on, come on. And this actually brings me to my kind of second gripe with the game as thus far. Especially late game when games are taking a very long time to make. There's not much to do in between the downtime. And that could be a bit of a problem. So, we can actually do two things and I didn't, I actually just skipped past it then. We can actually select a publisher, we can delete the game if we really wanted to, or we can self-publish. We can't self-publish because we actually can't produce physical copies yet. So, we have to resort with a publisher. And it would be ideal if we had a publisher that would really like our game, but it looks like they don't. So, uh, we can go with Kimco, uh, Tatoo, uh, Tatoo, or uh, Raw. Let's go with, let's go with Tatoo. Okay, so obviously uh, all the staff gets experience based on the game and etc, etc. Your first game is completed, you can now build the research area. And we're quite low on money and yeah, that's not going to sell. And this is what I mean, you, you're not going to you're not gonna get, even though the, the topic was in the trend and the genre was in the trend, it's a shit game, it's as simple as that. <laughs> and that's all you're going to be making for the first god knows how long until you actually get a decent engine. So. The next thing we need to make is the research, and I'm going to stick the research right here, like so. Stick a door there. Yay, research. We need uh, a desk. Now, before we do that, I need to make sure that we've got some contract work. Right, that one pays a lot, and it gives us a lot of weeks to do that, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to buy anything else just yet. I'm going to wait until uh, we've actually done this contract now as you can see uh, there is there is a lot of uh, the sims kind of uh, features on this game so obviously as you saw there mr. Frank uh, dry has decided to use the toilet he needed to poo so he went to the toilet and had a poo now it took him about three weeks to have a poo but I'm not going to debate why it took him that <laughs> so you might have noticed something there we can now buy an engine 
Now, this is what we need to pay attention to because this is where a majority of our money is going to come from as well as uh, contracts. So, as you can see, there's three features for this game. If we actually click on it, you can see that the only thing that's extra in this particular engine is Sprite. So, it's not a particularly great engine. It's the first engine you come across. It costs 10 grand and there's a profit share of 20%. So yeah, but we're not going to do that. What we are going to do though is make sure that we do not make an engine that corresponds to the, to the, um, to the actual genre that others are making. So we're not going to make one for um, skill. We're not going to make one for the skill game because it's already been done. It's pointless trying to go into that market because it's already been done. So what we're going to do is going to try and do other genres instead. But to do that, we need monies, and to to do to get monies, we need to do contracts, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, Sega has released the game at Agent One Thousand. Brilliant. Uh, we can actually just pull this down. This is the, this is kind of the oh, blue, and it's just gone off. Brilliant. Well, this is what happens when your game gets took off the market. It shows you the figures, as you can see, weeks and sales only eight. The unit sold was one thousand and thirty. That's absolutely terrible development costs definitely outmatch the income we actually made from it so we made a loss but you you probably will for your first game you will I mean if you're on easy if you're playing on easy or normal they are a lot more the reviews are a lot more lenient and it's a lot more easy to actually get better games you know better scoring games but on hard it's lethal it's ruthless you're not going to get a good game to start off with so, we're getting there. It's taken a while. Especially since Fangs decided to go on the poo poo. Acclaim has released the game and Mega Fights. Okay. Okay, so we actually have got access to a new feature. And now we've got lots and lots of monies to play around with. So, we need contract work. We still need to do more contract work, though. That's something you can. That's something we always need. I'm not going to do that one now because the workload needed for it is quite high, and there's only four weeks delivery, so we we won't be able to reach that. We'll actually end up paying them for cocking it up. So I think what we'll do is we'll go for maybe that one will be a bit easier. Even though it's only four weeks again, it's a lot less of a workload, so we should make that one. Now what I'm going to do is make one, two offices, right there like so and I think we can hire the game designer actually we can't hire the game designer oh dear okay so the next stuff that you do unlock is a game designer so we need to try and get that as soon as possible now the only way to actually do that is to increase the the quality of the office so we need to make sure that we focus on buying a few more luxuries and necessities so I suppose for the time being we can buy some plants plants are pretty uh, useful people do like plants so I'm gonna put a plant there a plant there and a plant there there we go they're cheap and people like them there's also fans they're a bit more expensive but they might increase it just enough for us to uh, get our gameplay employee let's have a quick look nope not quite Oh well, never mind. Doesn't matter at this point. As long as we are doing contracts and getting a little bit of money, that's fine. Or right, this one should. Now he should be able to do this himself. So I'm going to get Feng to start researching now. So we can research genres, features, and topics. Start off with we're going to restart. We're going to restart. We're going to research features. We're going to research sprites. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully. And um, we've got access to a new uh, genre, which is great. So we need to keep an eye on uh, what other engines get released. So this kind of strategy just does require a little bit of luck. If you're not getting the contract work that you can actually do in time, then it's going to be a problem. But we are kind of looking out at the moment. We do seem to be getting contract work. It's not very good money, but we can do it. And that's the main thing. We can do it, and that's covering expenses and being able to fund our research, which is what we need the most. So, we've actually got a little bit more money to splurge on stuff now. So, I might uh, splurge in some heating. So, I'm going to put a heater there on this side of the wall. Heat on that side of the wall. I'm going to stick an heater 
uh, in there as well. Eaters are great, eaters are really, really high priority in my opinion and some employees actually require it. As you can see, some of these employees here actually require certain things. So this one requires a toilet for example, Bendix requires a toilet, Mark Potter requires a column machine. We don't actually have access to these yet because we don't have a... Do, 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 do. Oh god, I can't think of the name. I'm a dumbass. It, the sitting room. That's what we need to do next. But to do that, we need to hire an employee. Which I don't like to do because the employees that we've got left are crap. They're not useful at the moment. We're not going to be making games in time soon. We're going to leave that until a lot later once we've actually developed an engine that's more suited and that's going to get more score. Otherwise, we're just going to keep losing money by keep making games that are mediocre. And, and as I said previously, if we use an engine that's made by another uh, company, then we're actually going to lose money again. We might make a little bit of profit, but not enough to actually make it worthwhile because we're we're back to, oh, okay, we're behind in research now because of that. So, yeah, you need to make sure you're doing both. Now, I don't know if I really want to do that one. That one is extremely tempting, but I don't think we're going to make it. That's the only problem. It's a decent pay, though, for just four weeks. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We are going... We're going to attempt it. I'm going to stick another desk in, which is what I need to do anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to stick another desk in. We're going to hire... Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point who I hire, because we're going to fire them soon after this uh, one's done. So there we go, we're going to do that. I'm going to get Feng, once he's finished Sprite, which he has done, over here. And we're going to concentrate on just this one. Once that one's done, we'll have enough money to be able to buy the um, staff room. And that's all the that's the only amount of rooms you can fit in this particular uh, building. Ob obviously, because it's so small, most of it's took up by this stupidly oversized head office that you don't need at all, except to buy stuff. And, you know, so silly, really silly. But, you know, this is hard. I mean, you do start off with this office as well. If you pick the easy start, you actually start off in a small office block with a little bit more money. So, I suppose that's good if you really want to start kicking it off. But, what I find is, you don't have enough momentum to keep going after that if you're not prepared to deal with it. And, we might have actually lost this. Yeah, we have. Oh, well. You know what? It was a risk. It was worth the risk. You know, seven. It was, it's only seven grand a penalty, so I'm not too bothered about that. It would have been an eye payoff if I'd have made it. We'll just use this one instead. That's forty grand. That's going to be one hundred and twenty right there, and that'll give be enough to actually buy the sitting room, sell the, uh, fire the other dude, and get the gameplay expert in. The gameplay expert is going to be then our main researcher. And Feng is basically going to be inter interchanging between the two, depending on what's needed. <clears throat> okay, now we've got economic simulation. Now again, I need to keep an eye on what engines are coming out. Usually it's a good idea to try and research something like RPG or Economic Simulator early on because those ones those ones don't tend to get engines from, especially Economic Simulator. That, was, that one doesn't really get an engine until a lot later. And again, this is this is actually a problem that a, a gripe have a better game. It's not as randomised as you might think, which is a bit of a downside. Alright, now we've got the money for that, I'm going to go ahead and make a sitting room. There we go, that's going to be the sitting room. They're fairly, fairly decent sized, you know, not too bad. And for that, uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and put both vending machines down. I might as well. One vending machine, do, 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 two vending machine. There we go. Need to make sure that I'm not oversaturating the office with nearly stuff. Stuff that we need and stuff that's essential and stuff that they're going to want eventually. So, okay, so there we go. There's our gameplay. Expert, so she's there, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire this dude. We don't need too many staff. If we have too many staff, it's just gonna cause too much problems. So, Mr. Thomas Pullman, I'm sorry, but we have to dismiss you. You can always hire him back, I think, anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, see, he'll come back whenever he's ready. It's not a big deal. Alright, 
Uh, unfortunately, there is a bit of a bug though, as you can probably see there. It still says that there's three people in this office, and there's only two. So if you just replace the desk that's empty, it should fix it. I say should, and it hasn't. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, so now we need to research. We need to keep researching um, features. So I'm going to research uh, PC speaker music. I'm going to research one more feature after that, and then we're going to research a genre, and then we're going to make our first engine. And I'll show you how to uh, make money from that. It's a bit different from how you make money from games. I mean, obviously, once you've released the game, you earn a bit of revenue every week. Engines don't work like that. Engines, you earn revenue when a game is made that was used by your engine. If it was the first time that that company has used the engine, then you get the uh, upfront amount and also the profit. If it was a second game using that engine from that same company, then you only earn the profit margin. So, just bear that in mind. Okay, so our contract work is done. I'm going to get Feng to help out there. Oh, there we go. It's reset itself now. I'm sorry if I didn't actually explain some of these principles. I mean, I didn't actually explain what these circles meant, but obviously, you, I suppose you already guessed. But I mean, as you can see, now we need to wait for another contract. Now, contracts tend to refresh every, not necessarily every month, but the refresh is every month. Sometimes you get a chance of giving some contracts, sometimes you don't. As you can see, we've luckily got one. That's another 37 grand in the bank if we do that. So that's fine. But I'm definitely going to get Feng just to help out with the research at this point. Because we need to uh, get it done as soon as possible. Hang on, that's the wrong... Oh, fuck. Stupid me. Sent the wrong dude in. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, actually. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, this is the problem as well. The the interface is a bit funky sometimes when you, the button's right there. I'm just going to make sure he goes right there. There we go. So he gets stuck in there. He doesn't have to move anymore. He can stay in there. Uh, what I will do though is I will actually make another. Oh, I know what I can do. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and sell some of these desks. I don't need these desks now. I'm gonna go ahead and start. Oh, hang on, that one won't fit there. Seriously? Seriously? Wow, well, I thought that was a. Uh... Huh. That's interesting. I didn't, uh, to be honest, I didn't even realise that the desks were different sizes. I mean, I automatically assumed that was the same size because that's all I've actually used is that one and that one. Wow, okay. That's interesting. Um, so, yeah, I can't actually. No, I suppose we'll have to keep that one then. <laughs> I just wasted $500. Excellent. Alright, so we got that. That's fine. Now we need to go ahead and research. Um, probably, I might not, um, I'll tell you what, we'll start off with an engine, we'll start making an engine, so I'm going to make sure that things there, we're going to make, uh, you will start off the economic simulator, it, t it requires the least amount of research points in each cheap, so we'll go ahead and start with that. I'm just looking at the engine, that's not done yet, okay, so we've got, yeah, it's just just skill game at the moment. Okay, the commander. I don't care about that. We don't care about the consoles at the moment. That's not that's not where this company's um, priorities are at the moment. It's just trying to get those engines out and trying to make some money from it. Okay, so that one's done. That's fantastic. So any more contract work? Nope, that's that's actually really good then. Alright, so we can... What should we optimise it for? Well, we've got skill game already. Um, we'll go for puzzle. I don't think a puzzle one's going to be made anytime soon, so we'll start off with puzzle. Now we'll sell the engine. At, we may, obviously, we'll make sure we've got all the features in at the moment, so that's good. We'll sell the engine at... It's going to be a bit pricey to start off with. We're going to sell it at 100, but... We're going to make sure the profit share is reasonable. So it's 15%. That first engine that was already there sells for 20 grand and it's 20% profit margin. The profit sharing. Yeah? So mine's more lucrative in that sense because it's less profit sharing but the cost is a bit high. I might even actually go ahead and knock that down to 80,000 instead. So we'll do that. 
and we'll call this engine uh, Feng Engine um, Puzzle 1.0. There we go. So this one might not actually this one might not actually get sold very early on until a bit later. The one thing you can do as well, which I didn't mention, which you probably um, which would probably be best off checking, is if you check publishers. You can see that each publisher has a certain share, certain market strength, certain relation, and certain fan base. So what we want to actually focus on is the market strength and the fan base. If the market strength is high, then you probably want to make engine that's good for that particular fan base. So for example, um, our engine that we're making is... Oh god, I'm being dumb, I've already fucking forgot. <laughs> Puzzle, yeah? So... What we want to see is what kind of company likes puzzle games and it looks like none of them do so I could have actually just shot myself in the foot there a little bit because no one likes puzzle games. A bit weird I know but yeah so I might have shot myself in the foot there a little bit. It does mean that you might not get sold as early on as I might expect if at all. And here we go we've got a second engine already so if we have a look at this this one is for there we go it's for arcade and got six features. I'm really glad now I've picked Puzzle instead of that because otherwise that one would be the one being bought. Even though the profit of sharing is a bit higher, it's certainly a lot cheaper. So as long as you can try and make a monopoly in that particular uh, engine and make it reasonable, then you're good to go. Just take a wee bit of a while. So I'm going to stick a cut in here and I'll see you next episode.